gave a TED talk <laughs> called The Danger of a Single Story. In this TED talk, she talks about how growing up in Nigeria was like for her, and then tells the story of moving to the United States at the age of 19 for university. Her American roommate had never met someone from Africa, but she'd heard a thing or two about Africa, and so she had some assumptions about what Chimamanda's life was like there. And her roommate said things like, your English is so good. How did you learn to speak English so well? And was shocked to learn that English is the official language of Nigeria, and everyone speaks English there. This roommate has also assumed that Chimamanda had never seen or used a stove before. And when she wanted to hear some of Chimamanda's tribal music, she was shocked when she pulled out a Mariah Carey CD. <laughs> she was shocked by a lot of the things that she learned from Chimamanda about life in Nigeria. Chimamanda went on to say, my roommate had a single story of Africa, a single story of catastrophe. All her roommate knew about the entire continent of Africa was dirt roads, mud huts, and poor people who desperately need our help. And Chimamanda said, in this single story that she had, there was no possibility of Africans being similar to her in any way, no possibility of feelings more complex than pity, no possibility of a connection as human equals. When a single story is all that you ever hear about one person or country or culture, you don't hear the full picture of their humanity. And it keeps us from being able to imagine people complexly simplifying whole people into teeny tiny little boxes that are easy to fit into our own carefully crafted worldview. And we see this single story at play in so many different ways. Like Chimamanda's example of her roommate's limited knowledge of Africa, there is our own knowledge and understanding of the continent of Africa and its 54 unique countries, all with a different infrastructure and language and culture. We also hear a single story about a lot of other countries and cultures around the world, just because we don't hear the other stories if we aren't specifically looking for them. But on a smaller scale, we also sometimes hear a single story about individual people. They're just reckless. They're just a nobody. They're just a criminal, just an addict, just unreliable, just lazy, just a Democrat, just a Republican, just a sinner. They're just fill in the blank. And those are some very small boxes for very complex people, very complex human beings. In our gospel today, Jesus entered the town of Jericho, and there were a lot of people waiting to see him, and one of those people was Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector. And we've heard about tax collectors. <laughs> we have heard about tax collectors. They were agents of the Roman Empire, and they often collected more than what people owed them and kept the extra to line their own pockets. 
And naturally, people were very suspicious of tax collectors. And Zacchaeus was not just any tax collector. He was a chief tax collector. This is like Zacchaeus being the head of the IRS for Israel and Palestine in a very generally corrupt system. So the people of Jericho started grumbling when they noticed that Jesus had seen Zacchaeus in that tree and invited himself over to Zacchaeus' house. He's just invited himself over to dinner at a sinner's house. Can you believe it? He's just a sinner. He doesn't deserve a visit from the Lord. In her TED Talk, Chimamanda said, Power is the ability not just to tell the story of another person, but to make it the definitive story of that person. To make that story the whole of who they are. And the people of Jericho had collectively decided that Sinner was the definitive story of Zacchaeus. He was a sinner, and that was all he would ever be. But Jesus disagreed. Jesus looked up in that tree and saw someone who was trying to break free of this story that had been assigned to him. He saw someone who was desperately trying to be someone else, someone who was more than the job that he had ended up in, someone who didn't necessarily agree with the ethics of what he had signed on to do. He was something more. And so Jesus invited him down from that tree. And Chimamanda said, stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign like the people did to Zacchaeus. But stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. By inviting Zacchaeus down from that tree and inviting himself over to his house, Jesus started to shift Zacchaeus' story. Zacchaeus had the opportunity to publicly share that he was changing. And in the Greek, the verbs that were used by Zacchaeus in his explanation that are translated in our text today as, I will give and I will repay, can also be translated as, I have already given and I have already repaid. So this is not an empty promise that Zacchaeus is making. These are not just empty words. This is work that Zacchaeus is starting, but that Zacchaeus has also already begun. It is something that he is actively working on, and he has already begun to change his life. He has already begun to be transformed by Jesus' presence. And he is already working on repairing the relationships that had been broken by his actions. Jesus invites us to call each other down from that tree, to see each other as the complex people that we are, to see each other and to be seen as fully beloved no matter where we are in our journey and to see each other and to be seen as more than whatever story the world tells about us. Chimamanda says when we reject the single story 
And when we realize that there is never a single story about any place, we regain a kind of paradise. And I would even venture to say that when we realize that there is never a single story about any people or any place, we see the paradise of the kingdom of God taking shape here and now. May it be so. Amen. We sing together our hymn of the day, number 722 in your hymnal, O Christ, Your Heart Compassionate. And I invite you to stand as you are able. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Keep your church steadfast in your word, reforming God. Deepen our faith and increase our love in Jesus' name. Further ecumenical dialogue and partnerships and equip us for unified witness and service in the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come to the aid of the poor, especially those suffering food and water shortages or loss of homes due to natural disasters. Halt the exploitation of the Earth's resources and lead us to seek justice and rescue the oppressed. Hear us, O God. 
Guide leaders of all nations, almighty God. Heal divisions, bring trust, and remove barriers that prevent collaboration and cooperation. Bring neighborhoods, cities, and countries together to work for the common good. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Save from trouble those who struggle with hunger, homelessness, or addiction. Strengthen the overworked and give hope to those who do not have enough work. Console those who are burdened by illness or grief, especially those in our prayer list and those that we name now aloud or in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Reveal yourself to all who seek you. Empower the hospitality ministries of this congregation to welcome others to your feast of love. Foster generosity in our stewardship to both our congregation and our community. Hear us, O oh God. Gather the faithful at the table of your eternal banquet. We give thanks for those who have witnessed to your gracious presence, especially Martin Luther and all who strive to reform and renew the church. Hear us, O oh God. With grateful hearts, we commend all of our spoken and silent prayers to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. continue with the offering as they share some special music with us and I need to go up there and join them so <laughs> thank you
please stand. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. We continue with the thanksgiving for the word, which can be found on page 220 of your hymnal. And the response from you is, we give you thanks and praise. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A few announcements before we conclude our worship today. Confirmation this week is at Faith. And Faith is having their Election Day Bazaar on Tuesday, November 8th from 4.30 to 7. So you are invited to uh, drive through for some pulled pork and lefsa and other goodies that they will be having. And then on November 19th, North Wasika will be having our lefsa drive, which is pre-order. Um, and there's more information about both of those events in your bulletins. I also wanted to let you know that we will be having a Thanksgiving Eve service this year on Wednesday, November 23rd. So if you are in town, we invite you to celebrate that holiday with us. Are there any announcements that I'm missing this morning? Is that official yet? Not official yet. Yep. To, to be determined, we will let you know where to go on that Wednesday, but no, to mark it on your calendar. <laughs> Matthew, okay, <laughs> you know who you are. Matthew Eric is leaving. Um, he's had his, uh, he's had his uh, summers with us, now he's migrating with the birds. So oh. <laughs> Okay, wow. That is an excellent transition into milestones. Yeah. So a milestone for a season together and blessings on your journey. A milestone for Eric. Are there any other milestones to share today? You made it home. Welcome home. Milestone. I was going to say the Corey just did a fantastic job today, really singing from the heart. Yes. Yes. Milestone.
milestone. I have two, if that's yeah. all right. <laughs> it's not allowed. <laughs> and, uh, tomorrow's my birthday. Oh, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> milestone. You did the math. Milestone! Congratulations on both fronts. Really? Yeah. Happy birthday. Play happy birthday for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can play it, not sing. I guess. <laughs> we won't make you do that. <laughs> Are there any other milestones to share this morning? together beautiful yeah I was in Green Bay yesterday for the ordination of one of my seminary friends and so for her call to ministry in the church milestone yeah any other milestones to share so many celebrations this morning yeah I guess a milestone for the Lutheran Church for for continuing to to reform and continuing to be the hands and feet of God's and God in this world. Milestone. <laughs> All right. I invite you. Oh, we have another we have a late join. Scott and I went to Grand Canyon for the first time tonight. First Grand Canyon visit. Milestone. <laughs> Milestones are for the big and the small and the in between. Yes. <laughs> And I would argue that the Grand Canyon is actually literally big, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I invite you to stand as we receive the blessing. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing together our sending hymn number 774. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>